By looking at this, you might think that this is just a simple text layer, but once you hover over it and start dragging it, you immediately notice that it is a 3D cube that you can interact with and rotate it around to reveal different text layers. Now, you might be already leaving the video thinking that this is probably way too complex for me and way beyond my capabilities, but please do not go anywhere. What if I told you that this was created just by drawing rectangles on a design canvas and adding some text layers and basically that's it without using any complicated design languages and stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how this was created. So by the end of the video, you're going to also have the ability to create something like this right inside the framer and without writing a single line of code. My name is Nandi, this is Frame University and let's get started. So yeah, before we actually go into creating this, this amazing thing, I want to show you where I got the inspiration from to create this in Framer. It was Daniel who posted this crazy thing on Twitter. I was like, this is so cool. Um, and yeah, I just, I just did it in Framer. So you can see that it's like 3D CSS transforms. We don't know what's that. Uh, we didn't know coding, but we can still build it because we know Framer. So uh, let's jump into Framer and start building it. You don't need a starter project for this. You can just open a blank project and, and start creating with me. So what we're going to do is we press F on our keyboard and draw a frame. And then we're going to set this frame to a fixed 360 pixel width and height size. So now this is what we see right here. What we want to make sure is that this doesn't have any fill color. So with this little X, we can remove it. Now I'm going to rename this to cube and basically all the sides of the 3D cube will be set up right inside of this cube right here. So in order to do that, we have to make sure that overflow is visible because some of these, you know, sides will be outside of the, uh, of the boundaries of this frame. So make sure that those are going to be actually visible. And yeah, I think basically that's it. What we, that's what we need to do here. Uh, one extra thing that I will do here is go to the right panel, click transform and set preserve 3D to yes. This makes sure that I basically set up the 3D environment for the sites that will go within. Because then if I create a frame, again, with pressing down F and creating it, I can just pin it to all the sides. I'm using absolute positioning here. And I can just say, this is the front face. So this is the front frame. I'm gonna leave it on this color and to actually make sure that it comes to the front and becomes the front face of the cube, we use depth to move it closer to us. So to make sure that we're seeing a little bit better what we are doing, I'm going to rotate this cube frame that we created uh, first, and that way we're going to be able to see it from a little bit different perspective. So, so I'm going to just select the cube here and on the right panel, click transform, add rotate and 3D and minus 40 and minus 40 along the Y as well. So you can see we have a little bit different perspective. Now, if you select the cube and the front, we can see that both frames are right here. Uh, they are the same position, but what we want to do is we want to bring the front a little bit to the front. So we want to move it in this direction right here. So to make sure that that actually happens, we have to use a special transform property, which is called depth. So with depth, we can move elements on the Z axis. So X, Y, and then Z is basically closer and further away from you. Um, now on the right panel, transform depth, as you can see, yes, I'm moving it. Minus values are making it further away from us or um, putting it further away from us or moving it further away from us. So many ways to say the same thing. Uh, but if we use plus values, it is going to move closer to us. So this is exactly what we want to do because this is the front face. And now you may be thinking, what is the actual value that we want to use here? So it's actually pretty easy to calculate. All we have to do is see the width and height of the cube. It's 360. We have to divide it by two, 180. That's what we're going to use as depth here. 180. Perfect. And now all we have to do is to duplicate the front. I'm going to recolor it a bit. So it has a little different color. I'm going to call it the back. And you might already know that I'm just going to change the depth to minus 180. And now it's at the back. Perfect. So again, if I start rotating this cube, I can do it whenever I want to do it to, you know, see how this 
cube looks in like 3D space. So now the next thing is going to be the top frame. So I'm going to duplicate the back, let's say. I'm going to set depth to zero. I'm going to again change the color slightly. And now I want to rotate this frame, right? So I'm going to add the transform, rotate 3D. And we're going to rotate it along the X axis. We're going to do minus 90. And basically that's it. Now, in order to move this up, we no longer need depth because that would be, you know, moving it like this. We don't need that. We can just simply use the pins uh, to, to move it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either just use my arrow keys. You can see I'm just using arrow keys to move it up. But you can also see that these uh, pin values are changing. We can use these pin values to see the amount of movement is enough. So we want to see minus 180 here. So I'm going to move it a little bit more and minus 180. Perfect. This is what we need. And you can see that the form starts taking its shape. So we're going to uh, rename this to top. Then we're going to duplicate it, call it bottom. I'm going to change the color again. This is just for preview, by the way, the colors, we're going to remove it at the end. And then I'm going to just reset this pin to the bottom and I'm going to set that to minus uh, 180. So now it is at the bottom of this cube. Now we only need the sides, right and left. So let's duplicate, let's say the front. I'm going to keep that in the center. I'm going to change the color to something different. And I'm going to rotate it. Now we're not rotating it at this time along the X but we're rotating it along the Y and again, just a simple Y rotation. And we're gonna make sure again that we are using arrow keys to move it. So I'm gonna just click or press the right arrow key on my keyboard and move it. So we see minus 180 here on the pins and I'm gonna call it right, duplicate it left and then move it to the other side minus 180 and I'm going to also change the color a bit. So now if I start rotating this cube a little bit, we're going to see that this is a perfect 3D cube that was created in Framer. No coding, no nothing. I know it's crazy, uh, but yeah. So now we have this pretty cool. We can you know, add this to our website or anything, but it's still not interactive and it doesn't have text. So let's do that really quickly. So in order to have text within these uh, sides, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of them to a layout. I'm going to set them to vertical direction and distribute start left alignment. Now the gap is going to be something like zero. And, uh, and I think I'm just going to select one of these sides. Let me reset the rotation on the main cube. So we're seeing the front face. Or this is the back, I'm not sure. Maybe this is the, this should be the front. Yeah, I think this is the front. I'm just having a hard time selecting it. Uh, let me just uh, press T on my keyboard. That's gonna be an easier way of doing this. Press T on my keyboard, click here outside of the breakpoint, write something like design in framer. And then we're gonna make it larger. I'm gonna change the uh, font to display or inter display. I'm going to change it to white. I'm going to drop the line height. Letter spacing is okay because it's the display version. And we're going to change it to semi bold. Now I can just come in an X here and paste it within the layer I want to paste it within. So I'm going to select the front, common V, and there you go. It is right there. Now I want to make this actually bigger so i'm going to just make it bigger like this so what i can do now is i can just put this within each so i'm going to copy and paste it in each of the sides all i'm going to change is the text on each of these so i'm not sure if i can do that properly so <laughs> what i'm going to do is i'm going to set all of these to fill a bit so they are nicely responsive because then if i change the right text to something some something something is here uh, i know that something is one, <laughs> one word but i just i i'm not sure if, if that will fit in one line so i'm going to just rotate this cube and yeah you can see something is here so now what we can do is we can just you know, change these text layers. So on the top, it is going to say something like, Hey there, how are you? And then, yeah, I'm just changing all of these 
Oh, I'm gonna speed up this part of the year. So now I changed all of them. So I can just, um, yeah, see how this looks as I'm like rotating this around. And yeah, I can see all of these text layers. Some of them though are rotated or like flipped in a way that we cannot read them. So if we see one of those, we can just locate them on the layers panel. So I think this is the left maybe, yeah. So when this is the case, we can just rotate the uh, along the Y the other way, so minus 90, and you can see that now we can read it. So let's just rotate this around and see if we find any more text that is not really readable. Maybe here as well on the other side. I think if this is the, no, this is not the right. Maybe this is the back, yeah. So we have to basically add a 3D rotation here because we don't have one here and just flip it along the Y axis, uh, which is going to be 180 degrees of rotation. Now rotate this a little bit more and yeah, it looks pretty much okay. Maybe on the top, um, maybe on the top, but actually, you know, we will not really know how this is. Oh no, actually, <laughs> okay. Actually the top needs to be flipped. So where is top? Here is top. Okay. So we're just going to do 180 along the Y. So now it is perfect. So this is great. Well, we don't need a color, so let me select all of these faces and remove the color. Now, this is what we're seeing, which is, um, you know, I guess it's a quite interesting effect, you know, seeing all of these text layers, uh, you know, creating the cube. But what we see on the original is a little bit different because we only see the text that is like on the front, like that is visible for us. Text in the back like behind the cube, we can't really see that. So in order to do that, we have to select all of these faces and we have to add a single property. It's pretty simple. We're gonna to go to transform back face and we're gonna set the back face to visible. Uh, from We're gonna set it from visible to hidden actually. Why? Because this property changes the back face visibility of each frame. Because for example, this text layer here in the background is visible, you can see it's, now I can just hide it, it's visible because that part of the frame right there, what we are seeing is the back side of the frame because we are forming a cube and you know, some frames are showing its front face and some frames are showing their back face. And with this property, we can just hide the back faces. So when the frame is rotated in a way that it's showing its back face, it's not going to be visible. So if these text layers also like rotate in a way that they go behind, they're not gonna, no longer going to be visible. Perfect. So we have this, which in itself is already pretty cool looking something, but you know, we want to make it even better by adding some drag interaction to this. By the way, to make sure that we're not going to interact with these elements or text layers when we are dragging, we can set their user select to none. So I'm going to select all of them and set it to user select none. I'm also seeing that this S is uh, breaking there. So I'm going to just remove it uh, because I don't like that. So now make this interactive. I'm going to go to framing.university, search for a 3D look. And I'm going to just copy this component onto my uh, clipboard and we can paste it here onto this um, you know, canvas. And basically what we need to do is we need to make sure that this cube is, is it doesn't have any rotation. So I'm going to set X and Y to zero. I'm going to wrap it in an additional frame. I'm going to set it to fit width and height with shift and A. And then I'm going to call this 3D cube and I'm going to place it right here. Because instead of that, we're going to have the 3D look component on our page. And we're just going to simply connect the 3D cube setup that we created to the component with this little connector here. Boom. There you go. Now, what you're going to see is that by default, it's just slightly looking at the at the cursor. But it's it's not looking really 3D. The reason why this happens is because we have to enable perspective on this component. So perspective set to yes. I'm going to set this value to 3000 because I don't want um, such an extreme amount of perspective distortion. And now you're going to see 
that this is still not looking great. So at this point, we kind of have to figure out what is the issue. And probably the problem is that the 3D cube right here is set to hidden overflow. You know, the wrapping, additional wrapping frame that we created. So we just set it to overflow visible and now it's gonna be, you know, much better. Now we have this 3D cube. So the 3D component works uh, in a way that it looks at the cursor. So the element, the 3D object looks at the cursor um, when we are hovering over or around, we can set the intensity to like a larger value. So it's gonna like look more or I don't know, which, you know, already is a pretty cool effect. But what we are looking for here is an effect where we can drag. So dragging will be enabled and, um, and basically that's it. Now, if we come here and start dragging, as you can see, we can drag this little cube around. To get a better experience, we can select the 3D cube and apply cursor, wrap cursor and grab. So when we hover over this, we can see that, okay, we can grab this little object. And basically that's it. We created a 3D text cube interaction that we can like grab to reveal new text layers. And we created this right inside the framer just by drawing rectangles on a design canvas. And yeah, without writing any code. So I really do hope that this video was helpful for you and you had fun creating something cool for your website. If you have any question, if you have any questions, make sure to drop down, uh, drop them down in the comment section. And uh, and yeah, I'm gonna leave this uh, remix down in the description. So if you weren't able to follow along or if you want to dig into the project file, you can do that. Just remix it with the link down below. And also check out Framium University. It has a bunch of cool resources. So if you go to the Framium University site and check out the resources, it has almost 400 resources at this point. So yeah, you're probably gonna find something that uh, that you like. And also, you know, lessons are published there. So yeah, if you're learning Framium or if you're a big user of Framium, you're probably gonna like this site. So yeah, make sure to like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.